Hello, welcome to RC Model Reviews, and today I'm talking about fat sharks. And no, I'm not talking about obese marine animals, I'm talking about the video glasses that are really the best thing to use for FPV uh, in preference to a screen. Now you can use a screen, and you can even use the video visor I'm working on at the moment, but to be totally honest, video glasses are best. It gives you a far more immersed, you know, you feel like you're up there in the plane, not just looking at a screen. It's a much better experience if you get yourself a decent set of video glasses. And to date, the fat sharks have been sort of the industry benchmark, which means not necessarily the best, but by the, sta the standard by which all others are measured. Now, I, as you see on my channel, I've reviewed the fat sharks before. These are the old fat sharks, and these are the new ones. What do you notice? Yes, they come in a black box. That's amazing, isn't it? Wonderful. But apart from that, uh, there are quite a few changes. Some good, some not so good. So let's uh, take a look at what you get for your money with the fat shark, the new Dominator fat shark goggles. Now these are the new fat sharks in their lovely black box, and these are the old ones, as I mentioned. Let's take a look at the old ones first. Just see what you used to get for your money with your fat sharks. They come in a brown box with fat shark written on it. Not very exciting, but inside you got some leads, AV leads, power leads, and you got your fat shark goggles in this lovely little velvety bag. And why do you get a velvety bag? Well, because these things aren't cheap and you don't want to wreck them by dropping them and scratching them. And also, very, very important, inside here are a couple of very powerful lenses. And if you leave your fat sharks on the ground like this and the sun shines in there, it will destroy the LCDs. It acts like a magnifying glass, just basically melts the LCD. So putting them back in this little bag when you're not using them is a great way to ensure you don't accidentally stuff them up. And let's take a bit more of a look at the old ones. We've got this foam strip around here that covers or supposedly keeps the light out when you're using them. The bridge of your nose goes in there. And well, I mean, that's it. So effectively you've got an LCD screen here, an LCD screen there, magnifiers to make them look bigger. And then you've got some controls. Up here we've got a little sort of four-way post. If you've ever used an IBM laptop, you'll know what these feel like. They'll they move around like a joystick. And now as you do adjust the contrast and the brilliance, which is pretty essential. On the side we've got, this is the base edition, on the side we've got a multi-pin plug that carries the video signal in and the power. So, I mean, really not much more to look at. Uh, there's some other plugs here for, I don't know, others. I, this is the base edition. I don't use any of the extra features, just the basics. So these probably don't even do anything. Now, so that's your, and it comes in a nice foam box. Look at that. Ooh. So when you drop it on your way to the field, things don't break and that's really handy. Now that's the old one. I'll leave it out because do some comparisons. Now here is the new one and I've already taken it out of the box at the moment but first thing I noticed was it doesn't come in a fancy foam thing anymore it comes in an egg carton. Look it's uh, I guess it's saving the planet recycled paper little tray that slides out of the box has all your goodies in it so they've been saving the planet and probably cutting a bit of cost as well. But there we go, we still get the arrangement of cables, there's your AV cables, more about that in a minute. And that's, uh, I think that's for the head tracker, I'm not sure, who knows. Um, oh look, one of those, and that's also for plugging into your radio, I think that's a Futaba plug. Now something very interesting is that plug looks similar to, in fact identical to the old plug that used to go in the side of the Fat Sharks for your audio video. So there's been some changes and there could be some confusion. And in fact, we'll get onto that, as I say, in a moment. So there we go. A selection of cables and also a little power cable. Okay, so you can wire that up to your battery to run the Fat Sharks. Um, now this has the built-in 5.8 gigahertz. It's not the base edition, it has the built-in 5.8 gigahertz. So you also get an antenna, a little uh, dipole antenna for 5.8. Even says Fat Shark on there. Look at that. Branding is everything. Right. So there we go. Inside this bag is where the money comes. And there you go, look at that. Instead of a little felt or velvet bag, you get this. It's a, it's a rigid case with a zip on it. This is a much, much better idea. Also, it has a thing to hang on your belt. Look at that. Brilliant. I love that. Big improvement over the old felt bag. And here we go. Inside, ooh, look at that. Here are the Fat Shark goggles, the new ones, the dominators. Um, buttons on the top. I think these are changes the channel on your 5.8 gigahertz or your 2.4 gigahertz receiver. There's the antenna connection there. Um, volume up and down, I guess if you're using headphones, which plug in there somewhere. Um, head tracker. Turn on the head tracker, I guess that's to 
sent zero the head tracker doesn't work at the moment because there's no head tracker in this one this little compartment is empty and you notice it has these little compartments so i don't know probably have to unscrew that i'm not sure oh no it pulls out anyway you can put a head tracker in this side and there's already a receiver in this side so it makes it a bit more modular than the old one and i'll just compare it to the old one again so you can see the difference the old one shiny shiny look at that eh and i've got to admit this plastic yeah not the best quality it looks like they break quite easily quite brittle perhaps um and i guess you look a bit of a dork wearing these out in the middle of a field you won't look much less dorky but these are fashionably satin and the fat shark is sort of the shiny black on dull black isn't that nice so there you go other big difference if we turn it over look it's got eye cups they've done away with that little foam strip around the edge to block out the light now they give you individual cups one for each eye and that does a really good job of blocking out the light although i don't find it as comfortable as the old foam strip uh, some people have said these fall out i haven't really used these much yet and i will find out if they fall out perhaps they do perhaps you need to glue them in uh, what else have we got in there you can see the lenses big powerful lenses so still don't lay these down let the sun shine in or you will wreck them and it's not covered by the warranty uh, the little 5.8 antenna which i had here a moment ago obviously just screws on the side and you bend it up like that i suppose there we go and then you can go out and you can be fully self-contained fpv flyer problem with that is it's okay for short range stuff but if you're going to go any distance you want the antenna a bit higher than your head you've seen my pole which i use to uh, to get the antenna quite high so this inbuilt antenna is really only for really short range stuff and also i'll just excuse me while i leave the scene for a moment what have i done with it i've lost it damn anyway they have a 5.8 gigahertz here it is it was on the table all the time they have a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter here it is here it's 5.8 gigahertz i'll take it out of the bag you can't see through the plastic i've noticed how this chinese bags are eating really thin these days most of the time they rip when you try and open them saving the planet i guess okay so here we go this is what you get for the airborne end there is a little transmitter it's quite small quite light um, not quite as small as the backpack module another 5.8 gigahertz antenna but again it's just a dipole it's not circularly polarized so there will be issues with polarization dropouts in the turns and you get a couple of wires you get a power cable and a signal cable which probably plugs into i don't oh, plugs into there does it yes plugs into there that plugs into there the power cable plugs in the other side so there you go that gives you your transmitter you just add a camera and away you go which is quite nice simple easy to do um, but the backpack i think is a, is a is a more versatile concept now the problem is if you want to use these with the RC model reviews backpack module you can't use that internal receiver that's on different frequencies it says 5.8 but it's a different set of channels in the 5.8 band so um, if you want to use the backpack you're probably better off just to get the base edition which doesn't have this receiver save yourselves a few dollars and use the av input from the receiver that i'll be showing you how to build or the one you can buy uh, separately that's probably what i'd recommend but anyway that's it now some gripes it all looks very good and it all works quite well but some gripes and probably only really because i've got this old set of fat sharks and my grizzling the first grizzlers have changed the damn cables as i say the av used to go in through the side on this little square connector now the av is two separate plugs now for av and power you've got a power connector and you've got a av connector now it's a bit of a pain i have to rewire my pole now to take this into account um, not a big thing i suppose but it is I don't see why they had to change i can't see for the life of me what was wrong with the old system it worked perfectly fine had av and power on the one connector plug it in unplug it away you go now if you want to walk away you get unplugged two leads and got to rewire your ground station the other thing i found which was really really annoying uh, probably not fat shark's fault if i can find the right connectors where are we um here we go this is the main connector for the fat shark um, this is the power lead they provide plugs in nicely see that smooth piece of cake this is the power lead i was using on the old fat sharks won't plug in now they are the right the same size connectors but due to tolerances um this won't plug into there so it's just i don't know cheap maybe one of these is cheaper than the other and it just as slightly out of spec it's only about 0.05 of a millimeter but it's enough to stop it going in easily and if i push it in too far it might damage it so i have to change my power lead as well never mind small things and they won't affect anybody who is just getting fat sharks for the first time now the fat sharks i should mention all oh another thing the manual of course 
Here we go, it comes with a manual. See, it's written down, you don't have to use a disc or anything. It's a very good manual actually, quite a bit better than the old one. And it tells you all about the what's and why for, where, what's and why for's and how to use it. But one thing again, another thing I found a little bit annoying and frustrating was I used to run, here we go, now I do have to leave the scene for a moment. I used to run my fat sharks on one of these. It's a two cell lithium ion battery. It's about, um, well, 7.2 volts, I think you find standard. Now the old fat sharks, no problem. Didn't, you know, run for hours on that. Brilliant. So what's it about 2000, no, 3000 milliampere hours or something. Run for ages on that. You could use a LiPo as well, same voltage. The new fat sharks have got a little beeper in them. When the voltage gets low, it goes beep, 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 beep. Well, when I plug this in, just damn beeps all the time. So I have to use a three cell pack, which is annoying because this is quite small. I've got Velcro on it. I can Velcro it on the tape. I can Velcro it on my head. But with these new fat sharks, I'm gonna have to use a three cell and this is no good to me anymore. I mean, why change? What has happened? Why do we, you know, no backward compatibility in that respect either. But suffice to say that these have set the new benchmark, of course, in FPV glasses. Now I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna try them out. Unfortunately, um, I won't initially be able to try out this RF system, but I will put it on the AXN and compare it to the backpack. This is only 100 milliwatts, so we won't get nearly as much range as with the backpack. And it's also just using dipoles, not cloverleaf antennas. So the range is further reduced because in the turns you'll get dropouts caused by uh, cross polarization. You get multi pathing, which will cause all sorts of dropouts. We'll sh I'll show you the comparison of the videos between using the inbuilt video system with these antennas and using the backpack with these circularly polarized antennas and a separate receiver that plugs into the fat sharks. But anyway, suffice to say, I don't think anyone will grizzle too much. You won't be complaining if you buy these. They seem very well made, nice and sturdy, and they, they do seem to work. The field of view, that is to say the size of the picture you appear to see when you look in here, is a bit smaller on these than on the old ones. And that's probably not a bad thing because with the old ones, what they did was they used really powerful lenses in here. So it magnified the little tiny LCDs until they were huge. Problem was they're plastic lenses, I think, and they were, uh, weren't polychromatic. What does that mean? Well, you know how when light travels through a prism, some colors get bent more than others, and a lens is really a bit like a prism. So when the light was traveling through those lenses and getting bent out to make the picture look really big, some colors got bent more than other colors. And so around the edges, you got a rainbow fringe. And that made it hard to read your OSD information that might be in the corner of the screen and made the corners look quite fuzzy. So the new ones have a much, not a much, but a, a noticeably smaller picture, which means you don't get that um, rainbow fringe and everything's a bit clearer, although it doesn't look as big. That's a personal choice, I suppose. But I'm gonna go and fly these, fly them in the with the AXN, in the backpack, see how it goes. I've just been sort of playing around with the camera looking inside the workshop here, and it looks really good. And we'll see, oh, by the way, still got that little post there for adjusting brightness, contrast, forgot about that. But that's it, that's the new Fat Shark Dominators. And I'll be putting them through their paces. Part two of this review, I'll give you a summary of how they've worked and if I've found any problems actually using them. And I'll try and get my camera in here so you can sort of see what it looks like. Uh, I don't think I'll be very successful though. I've tried that in the past and it just looks crap. But there we go. That is the review of the Fat Shark Dominator video glasses. Well, part one of the review anyway. And of course, I'm gonna be looking at these video glasses in the FPV Made Easy series coming up, be part two or three. I'll be looking closely at ways you can look at your image that comes down from your model, the video signal that comes down. All the different options will be the uh, glasses, LCD screens, the video visor, building the video visor, all that's to come on RC Model Reviews. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. More FPV stuff coming up very soon.